In this tutorial, we're going to address frame animation with the files that are created in Photoshop and then animated in After Effects. So with this space guy is a repeating frame that's been looped as a quick time movie. We'll have to start in Photoshop first to edit him. I've opened up the image I want to use in Photoshop and I've taken the time to edit out the background. So if I turn off the original, here is the space guy with his background removed. Now, what I've done is I've gone further and I've put a black background on a separate layer so that I can see this white a little bit easier. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the edited layer. Again, the background has been removed and I'm going to duplicate the layer. So either I'll right click on it and choose duplicate layer. I can go up to layer at the top of the user interface and choose duplicate layer there or if you prefer a keyboard quick, you could hit Command J. Now we're going to move his limbs so that when we put them next to each other in After Effects, it'll appear as if he's moving his arms. I'm going to go to Edit, and I'm going to choose the Puppet Warp tool. And I'm going to go in and strategically place some points here where I would like to keep him stable as well as where I'd like to articulate him. So I'm pinning down where the elbows would be, the tips of the hands, and you can see that I'm going about the body placing points. So these points serve two purposes. They're points at which I can drag my content and animate, or it keeps the image stable where we don't want it to move. So now that I've placed them around the perimeter of my spaceman, I can now go in and carefully start to move these points. You just have to be careful that you don't distort your imagery too much. And I'm going to click on the check mark at the top now. So now I've got two variations on my spaceman. Now if I wanted to do, I could get rid of the black background. And I would save this as a PSD that will open up in After Effects. So we'll do that and then we'll animate him in After Effects. I've got After Effects open. I'm about to import my file. I'm going to go to File, Import, File. And the other thing you really have to remember with Photoshop files is that once you select it, you've got a number of choices down here. If I import it in as footage, it may flatten it out as one element, but in this case I've got two layers I want to put side by side in a linear fashion and then animate over time. So down at the bottom where it says import as, I'm going to choose composition, retain layer size, and click open. And then click OK. Now there are two folders that will appear. One will have the red, green, blue icon that we see down at the bottom of the project tab here where we can create a new composition. And we also have a folder in which are the still images. Now because we're going to be making a loop, there's an animation process where we have to export it as a movie. So I'm going to go to the spaceman with the red, green, blue icon and I'm going to double click on it. And I can see that it opens it up in its own default composition. In here, I'm going to be able to animate these two frames side by side. So first thing I will do is I will go up to Composition, Composition Settings. Now just to make it a little easier, I'm going to set the frame rate quite low, maybe about 15, and then I'll click OK. Now I'm going to set the length that I want for each of these to be next to each other side by side. So in the corner of the timeline, uh, where I see all the zeros, I will click on that. And I'm going to put the number 8 in. 8 is roughly half of a second if we're running at 15 frames per second. Now I'm going to cut both of these frames at that point. So I'll put my cursor down at the far end. And when I see the two-headed arrow, I will click start to drag and hold my shift key as I go. Once I have them cut, I'd like to put them side by side. I'm going to take a moment to zoom in on my timeline a bit. 
and then I'm going to drag the bottom frame to snap precisely to the edge of the top frame. It helps to zoom in on it because as you zoom in, the closer you get in After Effects, you'll notice that you can drag without using the shift and it will snap very precisely. Uh, when I have gone down to the frame measurement that you see here in your timeline. Now, what I want to do is I want the animation to end at the end of this clip. So what I can do is I can hold my shift key and snap it to the end. Or I can select the clip and hit O for out and it'll put it where the frame ends. Another idiosyncrasy of After Effects which hasn't been resolved when you zoom in closely, you'll see that there's this deficit where you would logically think there would be content. But if I drag, you can see that last frame is essentially dead. So that's something you want to be aware of, particularly when you're looping an animation. I've got the timeline where I'd like it to be. Now I want this to be cut and edited at that point. So I'm going to get the work area bar. And I can do that by zooming out completely and then when I see the vertical blue rectangle I can drag this and shift and snap it to the playback head. Now we're going to be exporting this with an alpha channel so I need to turn off the default black background. So we need to make sure of two things. First of all, next to active camera in the comp window, I'm clicking on the checkerboard to give me that alpha information. Now I'm ready to export. I will go to composition, add to render queue. And in my render queue, I'm going to click on output to the blue text to name this. All right, so I'll click directly on the blue text. It will take me to my desktop and I'll give this a name. Leave it as a quick time, I'll save. Now I'm going to click on the word lossless. And this is the other component which is integral to getting that alpha information. I'm going to leave the format QuickTime and then under video output, where it says channels RGB, I'm going to choose RGB alpha. That will give us the channel with the transparency as well. Now I'm going to click on format options directly to the right of the channels. All I need to do is confirm that the video codec is animation. Animation means there is no compression, which means we will get that alpha channel. I'll click OK, click OK again, and then click on my render button. Now that I've completed my render, I'm going to import that loop. I will go to File, Import, File. I'll go to my desktop, select my file. I'm going to go to my main composition, and I'm going to drag that Spaceman file onto screen. Now, you'll notice that you need to put your playback at the very beginning because it is a very brief time period. The first thing I'll do is scale it. I'm going to hit S on the keyboard and I'll drag it down to a scale I might want. And I need this to play longer than that brief one and a half seconds. I right click on the file in the comp window and I'm going to choose interpret footage main. At the bottom of that window you'll see the word loop and here you can change it for as many times you feel you need. I'm going to use an excessive number of about 40. You'll notice that a skin appears, but you actually have to drag out the extra iterations of that animation to have it appear on your timeline for duration. Now I can have him fly wherever I want simply using the position key frames in the layer window. I'm going to put my playback head at the beginning. I'll hit P on the keyboard. I'll place them over here on the right hand side. I'll drop the first keyframe. I'll go perhaps about 10 seconds in time. And I'll drag him to the other side. And you can see that rubber band appears confirming that I've got uh, an animation from position change from one side to the other. So that if I were to play this You can see now that I've got the animation both repeating the loop we created originally and I'm able to do what I want as far as position scale rotation under the regular features that appear inside the After Effects.